If you're new to the HF Digital Modes or perhaps been around a while and don't know about the various propagation tools that are available to you today, you must watch this video. I'll go over the different ones and show you how you can use one to set up your antenna, or antennas in my case, to be able to know distance and direction. Another one I turn on before I even turn on my rig and it lets me know uh, the distances that are workable by band. And uh, another one that I actually use at the end to be able to determine where I have gone, as well as other people I'm looking at trying to find out how their antenna propagation works for them. So if this sounds of interest to you, let's get started. Hey, this is MJ, call sign KW3KW, and welcome to another episode of Ham Radio Made Simple. I'm continuing my series on ham radio for prepping. This is episode number 11, and the series has been focused on digital HF modes. And today's video will focus on propagation tools, something I wish I knew a lot earlier in my ham radio journey. And I just want to take the time to say thank you for those who have been hitting the like and the subscribe buttons. Uh, it's helping others, quote, stumble across this station. Uh, based on the YouTube algorithm. So thank you so much for that. And thank you for all those who took the time to post positive comments that encourage me to keep doing these videos. Today's agenda, why use propagation tools? What tools are available? Best practice demo. And again, I'm focusing on keyboard to keyboard directed calls. It, it's, this is applicable for those who just want to do random calls. But if you really want to go to that next level, which is a lot harder to do, you must watch this video. And again, I'll take the salient points throughout the video and do a quick summary at the end. So why use propagation tools? Well, before working any band, know what's possible. So for example, for me trying to uh, expect that I can reach from Raleigh to Portland, Oregon, um, how do I know? Well, th there are tools that'll show you whether or not the band conditions are workable. And that's the type of information that you need to know. So what is the potential or expected locations I can come across based on the band, the time of the day. And I'll show you one of the tools, it's outstanding, that can help you in that. And my motto is right band at the right time to the right location. The other part of all of this is to help know your antenna limits, whether the direction of the radiation patterns are going. So what, how is it, based on your setup, is it meeting your expectations and your goals of where you want it to go? Smith chart doesn't show distance, it shows you direction, but also know this, that for uh, 40 meters, 20 meters, 17, 15, the radiation patterns are going to vary. And that's why it's important to use one of these tools to basically learn how your antenna operates and what direction it's going and what its limits of distance. Also, since I have multiple antennas, I can now develop a pattern of understanding of how the skip zones usually apply so I know which antenna to use at what time. And so, I, for example, if I want to go to from Raleigh to St. Louis, I can hit St. Louis and not skip over it or even reach it. So again, these propagation tools are gonna to help you be able to hit your expectations and goals based on the knowledge of how it should operate and what is workable during that day. So let's talk about propagation tools. There are different tools out there and they all serve different purposes. For example, one I'll use before I even transmit to find out what's out there. There are ones that you can use during transmission. There are ones that you want to go after, after you get done and say, okay, where have I been? And one I use in particular for my antenna setup and just monitoring of the radiation patterns on it. Um, someone's going to say, these are internet dependent tools. Yes, they are. So when stuff hits the fan, they're not going to be available. So that's why you need to learn these tools now and how they work with your antenna. Uh, this is just helping me better grasp, understand when and how to use what antenna I'm using to get the expected outcome I'm trying to achieve. So I have two antennas. I have the MCOM2, uh, which is, um, I have both the a wire that goes out for uh, Envis, near vertical incident skyway, so I can get the 40 and 80 uh, more, I call it, within the state and around the state of North Carolina. Uh, I have a separate video I show you what I do, but I actually have a separate box with two toggle switches, and one wire goes for the Envis, the other one does a sloper position, which takes me out further from the state itself. It takes me out more of a, more in a regional area. Uh, recently added uh, the uh, Palomar Engineers um, off-center fed dipole. It's up about 35 feet in the air, inverted V, and this is my DXer. This is the one now I can reach all the way from coast to coast that I'm using. 
And so, uh, again, different purposes for these antennas. But how would I know and the best setups on this? I have to use these propagation tools. They are great ways to be basically set up your antenna, monitor your antenna, and determine which one to use at what time. So, again, use these tools while they're still available. Uh, I've used the, the, uh, the Whisper tool, for example, to change my directional setup. This antenna here has probably gone through three different changes or four of where the wires go, height, etc., until I got what I wanted from it. So, again, the tools are going to help you be able to get to that uh, desired outcome. Uh, like for me, I've added antennas, so I've got you know multiple ones. So my Envis, my Sloper, long distance. Uh, I, I can know again change it to get the directions that are optimal. I've learned to go more north south in my area. I'm getting more true east west outcomes, which I'm trying to get. But there's no way to measure a lot of this stuff unless you're using these tools. That's why I say you have to know this stuff. Now most of us know already to go to QRZ and you can get the uh, so, uh, solar terrestrial data for the day. And uh, that's great for overall band conditions. And again, it's, if you go in the morning, you go in the afternoon, it's going to change as far as what they're showing there. So just don't think of it as a permanent forecast for the day. Most of us already know to go to the bands. We can look at it and see which ones are good, fair, poor, whatever. But also focus on the geomagnetic field, which is showing it's active, as well as the solar flare probability. Once you start learning more about solar weather, it's going to greatly enhance your ability and your skill and how to use uh, your antenna based on the propagation conditions that are now and that are coming. So which tool would you use? Well, I can tell you which tools I use. And the first one that I use is the uh, uh, hf.dxingview.org. And again, each of the next slides will break each one of these down. PSK Reporter, Whisper, and Grid Tracker. So think of this one here as before. Think of this one as after where I've been. So this is where I want to go to, what's going to work, what's probable. Where have I, what have I accomplished? Uh, Whisper is what I want to do to set up. Uh, my antennas and, and what's where am I going with that directionality of the uh, of my signals and grid tracker is for those who are doing FT4 FT8 real time use they're doing it exactly when they're opening the application I'm not going to go deep into grid tracker uh, but if you're FT4 FT8 there are plenty of great videos that are out there uh, it is a must tool if you're using FT4 FT8 on a regular basis so let's first look at the hfdxview.org one and quick shout out to Jeff VE6JXN for what he has done as far as showing me um, this, this tool. Again, appreciate those who are in the uh, watching it. I call my audience. I don't know if there's an audience, but uh, fellow ham people are trying to learn like myself that throw comments back to me and, and reached out to me and let me know how this tool works. Thank you, Jeff. I appreciate it. Um, this is the first tool that you should use because this is a map that shows real time radio propagations. And it operates on 11 bands, so it's basically 160 down to uh, 6 meters. Uh, you're going to be able to, to track and look at what's going on in a 15-minute cycle, and it's updated every minute. Uh, the JavaScript, it has to be enabled in order to see the real-time graphics that go into it. So this is what it looks like. So here is a map, and what you got here is single sideband, you've got CW, and you've got digital. Now, Digital, just so that you don't get confused, actually incorporates all of this, all of this down here and around. So based off of single to noise ratios, and I'll get in the next slide, I think it's, you know, uh, uh, I think it's a 10 that they use to, and, and above. Uh, CW, I'll show you what that is. But the digital, I think it's like minus 28 that they use and saying that this is a workable area that you can expect uh, based off my location right here at uh, 18 which we're looking at uh, 17 meters. So uh, again, nice tool, really, really nice tool. So this is the one you want to see before you transmit, before you even get on. So for example, this is what the band conditions are on 40 meters. And if I didn't look at this and I'm, I'm getting reports, I'm getting California, I'm getting Sacramento or whatever on uh, JSA call or FT8 or whatever, uh, it, it, then you would think and you conclude, well, I should be able to get Portland and Seattle. Well, no. This is how it's going. This is not workable. This is workable. Doesn't mean you're going to achieve it, but this is where the propagation uh, is set up. And I'll get again. Depends on your antenna. Uh, with my uh, with my uh, offset Fenner dipole up that high, I'm able to get way out here now. I wasn't before, but again, understand the map. And this tells you right then, okay, if, if it doesn't work on 40 meters, maybe I should tr try 20 meters or 17 meters, for example. And here is the URL, again, posted in the link below. 
So again, as I had mentioned, what makes this powerful, what makes this able to, to get such accurate information is pulling from WhisperNet, Reverse Beacon uh, Network, uh, CW, FT4, FTA, DX cluster. So it's providing all of this uh, data in there to give you a really, really accurate and uh, real-time type of data. Now, how they do this, the, the map indicates uh, SNR, or signal-to-noise ratio levels, with three different per-band shades. So the single side band, it's saying basically anything greater than 10 dB, CW or greater than minus 1 dB, and digital modes is basically at, uh, we're looking at minus 28 dB and greater. So when we talk about whisper, we're looking at Weak Signal Propagation Reporter Network. That's what it stands for. And it's all off of WSJTX. This is what the screen looks like. Uh, again, I'll show you how to get to it. It's basically under mode right up in here. You see in mode, and you would just uh, click that on, and it would open up, and you can pick Whisper on here. But this is designed for probing potential propagation paths. Understand this, low power transmissions. There's a lot of people doing milliwatts that are sending it out. So just because you see... Uh, a minus 27 dB until you know what power they sent it out, and I'll get into that here uh, shortly. Uh, this number is doesn't have any kind of reference until you know the power that was behind it. So if they did like you know, uh, you know, uh, a milliwatt versus five watts, and you're getting minus 27, what would it be at five watts or 10 watts? So again, uh, this is not. This has to be relative to the data that's in this column. Again, I'll explain all that out. So again, works within WSJTX app. So I use Whisper to learn about my antenna's radiation pattern in real time. And so, I, yes, I've looked at the Smith charts when, before I bought my antennas. And I, even with my antenna analyzer, I, I look at it. Uh, it's great. tells me directionality. And we know that the 40 meters is going to vary from the 20 meters far as the radiation patterns. But what I'm trying to look at is also like the distance. So with Whisper, uh, it's going to report the signal-to-noise ratio referenced at a wider band width. So we're looking at about 2,500 hertz. So usually typically around 3,000 is considered wide, but 2,500 wider bandwidth. And uh, it's looking from anywhere from minus 30 dB to plus 20 dB uh, within, that, within that range. Also, it's important that if you have a time sync tool that you do it before uh, running Whisper uh, with your rig to make sure that your computer and your rig are uh, synced together accurately. This is what the screen is going to be pulled up on it, but let's kind of go through it here. Here's where the 20 meter is uh, I set it for. And this is a drop down. I'm choosing 20 meters. Next thing I'm going to want to do is check the power I want to use. I'm going to use 5 watts, and I'll, break it, I'll get into this a little bit more, but I'm using 5 watts. I want to make sure I tune my radio, so I hit the tune button and I adjust the power slider right in here. Mine is about here. I want my ALC about a quarter of the way uh, on, the, on the graph. Uh, on my rig. So again, quarter or less, uh, hit the tune. Next we want to do is um, is go ahead and uh, look at uh, the uh, uh, monitor and enable buttons. You want to make sure those are both on. And then we, once we start transmitting, it's going to transmit, it's going to show you the data at the time it begins to transmit. So this is what I'm hearing, this is what I'm transmitting. And going next in here, uh, this is the, you know, the signal-to-noise ratio, dB, but we have to look at it in relationship to the power that's showing in there, which is really uh, units of dBm, which is decibels relative to 1 milliwatt. So 3 dBm's equal 1 watt. Well, I'll try to calculate all that out. What I did is I used this drop-down menu right in here, which is this. I screen captured it, printed it out, and so I, I now can look at it and know that when I see uh, 13 in here, that's really 20 milliwatts. When I did 5, which is in here, and when I see 37, so if anyone's doing 37 right in here, they're doing 5 watts. So I'm getting minus 16 at 5 watts. I'm getting minus 24 at uh, 20 milliwatts. So again, it's important to understand what these numbers are and how they relate to in here. Because this is telling me that I could probably easily get a good contact with this person if that's all the power that they're using. Uh, also understand that it's going gonna, it's gonna to receive and transmit in uh, uh, 120 seconds or, or two minutes. And you'll see this go and then stop and start over again. Receive, transmit, receive, transmit. This is what the map looks like. And the map that you have to go to a URL, which is www.whispernet.org. And again, the URL is in the link in the description below. But this is telling me 
uh, you know, when I did the, the 20 meters, the, where it's going, how far it is off my new off-center fed uh, dipole antenna. And this is where it's going. And again, this was a short period of time. But if you hover over this, you can get information. These are the people that are, uh, you know, I'm hearing, and this is the people that heard me. So the difference between hearing and heard, this is really nice information to know. So again, hover over if you want uh, each of these uh, uh, flags, if you want to say for what they are. So how did I get there? Well, when you launched that URL, you're going to have to first register as a user, log in, because it used to be you didn't have to. You could just go right to the map. Uh, I'm pretty sure now uh, you have to have, uh, do a login. And just a side note, for any of those who did a vanity call sign change like I did, and that person had registered with this, you're going to have to reach out to them and tell them that you've taken over that call sign, and they're going to ask for a copy of your ham radio license with the new call sign on it. Uh, so just FYI on that one. But again, once you log in, you know, from your account, then you just have to go to the map section and then, uh, under the map at the bottom below, it's going to show you, okay, let's look at the different things that we want to do for the map setup. I'm choosing 20 meters, which I've done. And it has all the bands that are in there. I'm doing WhisperNet. It has, you know, uh, FT8, FT4. You can look at all the different modes that's available. You have to put your call sign in. And the other thing is you can do your time period. You want it 10 minutes, you want it 30 minutes, you want it an hour, you want it 12 hours, 24 hours. And for, for me, I just kind of uh, turn this thing on, hit an hour and let it run. And then I come back and take a look at it. And always hit the update button because what's gonna happen is it's, it's, you won't see the map until you hit the update button. And so uh, anytime you make changes or anything, always hit the update button when you look at the map. So I want to give a shout out to Kurt, KD9 SUV, turned me on to PSK Reporter. And what this is, is a signal reporting and spotting map. This is the one a lot of times uh, after, you know, we're doing uh, practicing sessions with Jeff and Kurt. And uh, we'll go on to PSK Reporter. And not only can I put in my call sign, he can put in, I, I can put his call sign in and vice versa. And there's no login to this one. And this basically is letting us know what we did accomplish. Where did we go? So this is a really good tool to verify you know, where you went. And again, this is a short period of time. And uh, what you're looking at here is, is the map. This is the site. It's pretty simple. But understand, I'll get into all the functions that are up, up in this area. But what you're looking at here is I'm on 20 meters. I'm looking at signals sent and received by uh, the call sign. My call sign, I could, I could put in KD9 SUV and see what he's doing on a particular band, whether it be JSA call, whisper, or whatever, FT8. And uh, here's 15 minute increments. You have to hit the go button. Once you hit the go button, uh, it, it does the, compu uh, the, the computations of, of the information and will pull all of this up. So for example, on uh, WSJTX, FT4, FT8, is a lot of information comes off of FT8 that fills this map uh, that goes in here. It uses FL Digi uh, with uh, PSK31 in particular is where it's pulling its information from. So just want to give you another view that you can see on in here. So if we're looking at it, anytime you see, uh, you know, uh, again, different views that you have on here, these little balloons, if there is something like with a, uh, a time stamp that's on it, then that's your information. Some of these are not yours. Some of these are monitors that are out there. So uh, if I hover over one of these balloons, for example, uh, it's going to give me and tell me, you know, where I've gone. Okay, this is, this is okay, from VO1NC in Newfoundland. And uh, it's showing the distance, uh, 1,528 miles bearing 49 degrees. And the frequency that it was heard on was FT8, and the signal was minus 6 dB. So, again, a great tool post. I don't use this during. I use this after. And, again, more people working this app more reporting is going to take place. So always make sure in a lot of these apps you put allow spotting to take place or uploads to uh, PSK Reporter or whatever that's uh, it, within the uh, setup within each of these apps. So again, look at here. This is what you want to put in the meter, your call sign, uh, what kind of uh, mode that you're going to use, what is your time, hit the go button. And this, the bottom line here is current stats. So at this particular time, there are 32 active JS8 monitors. That doesn't mean ham radio operators. There are permanent monitors that are out there. 
32 of those monitors are working on 20 meters, three of them are working on 40 meters, one's on 15 meters, and one's on 30 meters. So again, play around with this, show all bands. Legend will actually show you the colors, what they mean. And uh, again, a, a nice tool, short learning curve. And again, as I mentioned, you can put anybody's ham call sign in there to get and see who, for example, if I'm trying to reach uh, Kurt, uh, you know, up in the uh, northern Illinois area, if I put his in, I can see what his capabilities are from his antenna. So not just mine, I can look at, find out the propagation status for him. Uh, as we look at this, you can, as I mentioned, you're going to see the, uh, the seven minutes in here. Uh, again, hover over, or if it's, uh, you know, you can pull up the information right here, or if I just click on it, it's going to pull up, and this is all the information that I'm looking at in here. So this is telling me a GSA call, uh, again, minus 19 dB uh, from this tool that, again, what I have worked, not where I am going, what I have worked. So look for time boxes on your report, too. That's what the bottom line is. This, let's see if I see a colored one in here. No, I don't see it. A lot of it's a colored balloon within here. Those are monitors. There's one right in here. There's a colored monitor. That's a monitor station right there. These are other people working it that I'm not necessarily reaching. So what is Grid Tracker? Well, Grid Tracker listens to traffic uh, from WSJTX, and it displays it on a map. This is, again, I'm not going to go much in depth on it. This is a, a longer, longer learning curve, but if you do an FT8, uh, FT4, you're going to want to learn from this. But it's basically designed for those apps. It's real-time spotting. This is where you can chase specific grid squares that are out there, things that you want to work that you haven't gotten to before. It shows where you've been, uh, where, you knew, where you want to go that's on your checklist. Uh, it, it's popular for logging if people really want to log all of their contacts. Again, great, great, great tool for, for doing all of this. And it can even allow for award status progress where you are. So Grid Tracker's map is going to look something more like this. It's a little bit different. Again, uh, WSJTX, the screen looks a lot like Whisper, but the, the mode is, is being used for the Grid Tracker. Nice uh, integration between the two apps. So now when we go and look at the difference between directed versus a random call, uh, there's a big difference in effort and success, and that's why I have to use these maps. So if I'm trying to connect to, you know, uh, uh, Tom, who's over in the San Antonio area, and that's KI5SWA, uh, 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 i got to make sure, first of all, the propagation works for both of us. So this is where you want to look versus just saying hope and prayer. Keep your fingers crossed. Um, so you have to use these propagation tools to determine whether or not you have any capability or opportunity of success, as well as know your antenna limits and capabilities. So, for example, my Envis antenna is not going to reach us on 40 meters. I know that now. But uh, a sloper may get it, but for sure my uh, offsetter fed uh, uh, dipole, inverted V, does get it. So... This is where we're trying to adjust antenna, our antennas continually, trying to figure out which one works, which one should I use, uh, how are the bands, what different results I'm going to get based on whether I'm using, you know, uh, 40 meters, uh, uh, 60 meters, 80 meters, whatever it is. I'm trying to look and see which one is going to give me the best outcome results. And time of day, we always know within 15 minutes, you're going to get a different propagation result and report. That's why you have these tools and you're working them. Bottom line is practice, practice, practice. That's what you need to do. You need to practice, practice on this stuff. That's what I'm doing. So with HF digital modes, my top uh, keyboard to keyboard modes for MCOM are JSA Call, I really like and been using, FL Digi, particularly FSQ, um, uh, VARA, HF Windlink, peer to peer, which is nice. Uh, uh, our group is learning to check our emails uh, morning and nighttime and Eventually, we'll move to, uh, to, to the peer-to-peer -peer side of it and just leave our rigs on during certain times of the day for messages to be received. Uh, again, trying to do this without the Internet. Fun to do it now with the Internet, with the gateways, but if that goes away, you better know how to do peer-to-peer -peer on that. And VAR AC, um, still working through some of that. Again, minus, below minus 15, again, minus 15 and worse, it, it just takes forever to transmit. It uses too much power. So trying to work on that, hopefully with my uh, antenna setups the way they are now, the VARC will, will be a game changer. So let's stop right now and get into the demo portion of this and actually show you how it works. 
the first thing I want to do is uh, open up the HF map because I want to see what the propagation patterns are currently. And so we're going to use the uh, hfdxview.org. Uh, it's going to show all of them, and you can hit the play. It's going to scroll through all of them. This is my grid square, which you want to put in yours, and you just simply do it by clicking on near you. If I move it over here, you're going to see that's the grid square moves over there, so I can just scroll in, and I'm going to go Raleigh, put that right over there. I get a little bit better, and that's close enough. I'm at FM 05. You know, it's probably maybe like right about there. Okay. Anyhow, uh, you can put that in. Uh, sometimes I went ahead and just try and type it in. And just go 05, hit enter, and it pulls it up. So that's the easiest way to get the exact one, which you can see right there. But for me, what I'd like to do is to basically turn all this off. Uh, what I'd like to do is I'm going to do the 40 meters. And what I'm going to do is select that, and I'm going to hit the play. And it's going to show now, and I'm going to back off with the scroll button. You can see it does the whole world. But this, this is the pattern that you're going to see in here. Now, don't click anywhere <laughs> on this map because it's going to move your, your grid square point. So just kind of hover over. This is what you can expect as far as uh, propagation, I call it uh, capabilities, which are you can work. doesn't mean you are going to work it, but you can work it uh, depending on your antenna. And with my sloper antenna, uh, MCOM 3, I'm not getting over here. Uh, I just know the limitations of it. And I'll get into that into a second. And again, change whatever you want that goes in here. Just make sure to pick it, hit the play button, off you go. Uh, over here is, um, the, uh, I can scroll back and forth or use the scroll button on my mouse. Not all the applications do that. If I pull this down, I can do the quick start menu. It gives me some basic information. I can do the legend, which is going to show me, for example, when you see these type of stars, what do they mean? Um, this is your grid square from where you are or the perspective that you want to start and look from. And um, let's see here. I can do about, and this is going to show you, for example, maximum usable frequency is basically usable uh, use frequency between two points. And that's what the MUSF is, if I wanted to put that, check that, and again, I would hit the play. So again, just some quick understanding on it. So from my perspective, I'd be looking at this and saying, if I wanted to get to Dallas, I'd have to go change my antenna because I know my sloper is not going to reach it. But it's telling me that I should be able to because of my uh, off-center fed uh, dipole that's you know inverted V 35 feet up into the air. I know it can reach that. How do I know? Well, I use something like this, WhisperNet. This is the one when I'm setting my antennas and trying to get a, an idea. So when I'm looking at, for example, back over here, and when I was doing this, this is pretty much the digital that went in here, and this basically reflected what the uh, propagation at the time when I ran this report. So it does, it works pretty good. But my sloper antenna is only going to give me a certain distance away, and so I know, but this is what I'm seeing today about how far I'm able to go. Uh, again, it's it's not meant to be long distance. But if I wanted even closer around in here, again, this one you can't scroll. This one you're going to have to hit the plus sign. You notice it's taking me out of ways before it's capturing anybody. With my Envis antenna, I'm gathering a lot of information right around me. And that's what it's designed to do, near vertical incident sky wave for 40 and 80 meters. It works great. That's why, to me, multiple antennas to go more uh, call it local, regional, regional, and long distance. So that's what I have set up. Um, how this works, though, remember, when you come on, you're going to have to log in. When you pull this up, you're going to have to create a username and password if you don't have one. You go up to the maps right in here. And how did I get this? Well, I entered in, for example, the band. I wanted to go 40 meters band. This is a whisper map, remember? So it's only going to basically be doing like whisper. Um, it's got, Here's my call sign. Here is the time period. I can change it to my last 30 minutes, to my last hour. We'll just go three hours. And this is what I like to include. You don't have to do that. Once you get that, you have to hit the update. And it will update it, but sometimes it may take two or three minutes to build out and compile the data that's happening. So when you first open it up and you hit the update, don't expect this map to show anything. Come back five minutes later, and all of a sudden you're going to see information. Again, scroll doesn't work on this one. So if I want it, I'm going to have to do that. I can move the screen over and keep scrolling in and seeing what I want to see. Now, I'm going to pull up even closer so you can see some stuff here. If I go over here, I can find out. If I click on this, this was heard by... KN4IBZ, uh, and not much more information than that unless I go back to the Whisper 
uh, a page which had all the information within WSJTX. But if I click on my own, it's going to show me all who are hearing me. So again, who's hearing me and who's, uh, who's heard me. It's a little confusing on the two, but they're great to be able to understand who, who am I hearing and who's hearing me. So not much more complicated than that. Don't make it be. Um, and if when I'm done, I'd like to go to my daily reception report. And this is how I'm going to set it. I'm not going to do all bands. I'm going to do, for example, 40 meters. Uh, signals received by call sign. I'm going to do KW3. I'm going to do all modes. Or actually, I'd like to do, for example, uh, let's see. Uh, I think in here I went uh, JSA call. And instead of going 12 hours, I'm going to go the last one hour. Now you have to hit go. Now it's going to pull up and it's going to show me, for example, if I hover over and you look in the left-hand corner, which I misspoke earlier in the video, it's the left-hand corner. Uh, you can actually see the, you know, the bearings, JSA call, minus 18. Uh, you can see a little bit about their uh, antenna. They've got uh, an NFED, a Nimbus battery backup, which is pretty cool if they're able to uh, pick that up because I'm using uh, the sloper version of the NVIS, not the 10-foot uh, wire off the ground. But again, this is the type of information that you want to get and want to look at and say, okay, who have I been reaching based on uh, whatever uh, mode that's out there? Uh, the other thing you want to do is you can pull up the legend and it's going to show you what the symbols are, the colors are that are in here. Um, you're also going to be able to uh, look at the active monitors that are going on, as I mentioned earlier, that's in here. Uh, display options are right in here. I'd like to put in to show signal to noise ratio, which is clicked off right in here. And you can pick what you want to hide or show and again, put through the times. Uh, for, for those outside the United States that uses kilometers, this is what you want. Uh, be able to uh, check that off right in here. So again, uh, your choice, what you want to use. You don't have to hit the save button. It's pretty much done. And again, so before I start, I want to see what's possible. Uh, I want to actually look at my antenna and figure out how it works, what, what's the directionality, what's the distance expectation. And then I can go back and look at, for example, in here is actually what did I accomplish? Where did I actually reach? And what is some of the information that's in here? So again, three great tools that I think you're really going to get a lot of benefit out of. Uh, and if you have any questions, put them in the comments below or email me at hamradiomadesimple at gmail.com and I'll send you any information that I have available that can help you with this. So let's get back and wrap this up. Okay, let's wrap this thing up here and do a quick summary. Uh, hopefully you're walking away with antenna, 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 and not just the fact that I said it's like location, location, location. I'm saying multiple antennas is really what you're going to probably need so that you can uh, cover certain geographical areas, uh, work better in certain bandwidths, and uh, reduce the number of skip zones that you have to do, especially when you're doing directed calls. So use these tools while they're still available and practice. So you need to know what the capabilities and the limits of your antenna. You need to be able to make changes right now while you can. Uh, you need to focus on what bands, uh, what direction that you're looking at as far as these radiation patterns, the time of day, uh, by digital modes, which ones seem to work better. And in, in the end, in all of this, you really need to have fun, which I do and I'm doing all of this, and always learn from others. And again, shout out to those who have passed on information to me that I can pass on to you. And this whole thing is about sharing information and helping us all become better ham radio operators. So my next video I'm going to focus on is Windows Sound Card and why it's important and how to use it. Uh, I think I finally got my head wrapped around this stuff, and I think a lot of people don't understand that you should have your sound settings uh, always kind of open when you're, um, when you're operating your ham radio so you can make adjustments. And again, practice is going to let you know what your settings should be for your mic, for your, uh, for your sound, uh, USB audio codecs, uh, both the, the sound and the microphone. Uh, I'm going to look at doing an HF digital. There's nothing out there that really is, is anything. It's, it's going to take me a while uh, because there's not many people out there being able to show me, you know, what are the settings within FL Digi if you don't have an all-band radio, for example, in there, and you have to do manual. So I've got a few other people that are trying to help me with this, but if I can get this sorted out, I'll be doing that one. And then uh, JSA Call, which hopefully a lot of you already know already, but for those who don't, I'll just go ahead and do it anyhow. So again... Uh, I appreciate you guys taking the time to uh, hit the like and the subscribe button, and thank you for your positive comments. 
again, thank you for supporting this channel with just, you know, your viewership and using the information that I'm giving and helping me learn along with you. So this is MJ, KW3KW with Ham Radio, Made Simple, thanking you and out.